And I am glad to welcome Jorge. So Jorge Martinez will be speaking about a uh, map campaigner redesign, the data quality monitor for OSM. So let me read a few words about uh, Jorge. Jorge has contributed for FOSS since 2014, and he has a master and a bachelor in electronic engineering uh, from Universidad del Norte in Barranquilla, Colombia. And his research uh, was focused in the development of computer vision algorithms to track and recognize objects and action in videos. Right now, he is working with HOT, especially in Tasking Manager. So let's welcome Jorge that we're we'll presenting uh, in the next talk. Thank you, everyone. Uh, one moment. Uh, so one suggestion is that we have this path in the one you can be adding questions and answers. Please do not wait at the end of the talk to write your answers, your, your questions, sorry. Please, uh, during the talk, you can start writing your questions. So we have uh, all of them already kind of aligned for the end of the talk. So you can start writing as long as you are watching the presentation. Thanks a lot. OK, so let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you for watching this video. Um, this is the first time I'm, I make a presentation at State of the Map. And also, this is the first time I make a presentation remotely. <laughs> Uh, I know the the organizers are, are doing a great effort to make this happen. So also I want to thank them. And yeah, I'm going to talk about Map Campaigner, which is the data quality monitor for mapping projects. It's a tool developed by the humanitarian street map uh, tech team. And yeah, I'm Jorge Martinez. And first of all, I want to talk about me. Uh, I joined the hot tech team last year. Uh, first of all, working on Map Campaigner, then migrated to Task Manager. I recently joined uh, on March uh, the World Food Program GIS unit and doing some work in GNOT. My background: I'm a bachelor and master in electronic engineering. My thesis or research project was relating computer vision, and I'm from Barranquilla, Colombia. So the agenda: the first thing is an introduction. And then we move to what is a mapping campaign. And the third thing would be what is map campaigner, the tool itself, how it works. I'm going to show a brief demo and then uh, some like tech explanation of how it works. And finally, uh, the questions and answers, which is, uh, I suppose, are going to be held in the QA session at the conference. So. Uh, over the years, uh, there have uh, we have seen like different projects related to mapping. Uh, we have seen like a group of people that gathered together and start uh, collecting or updating data uh, related to some particular uh, topic or some specific, uh, yeah, some specific topic. For example, you can I, I show I'm showing you here a screenshot of Medellin Mappers. Uh, which is an application that uh, shows uh, basic uh, information related to where to find uh, supermarkets or where to find uh, pharmacies or drugstores. Also, uh, there is an, an application, a collaborative tool, where people uh, update and collect data related to health facilities, which is health sites. So, uh, the, the basically these two applications what have in common is like uh, there is a group of people um, that working together they are like uh, collecting data or obtaining data for some specific topic and you can find in the OpenStreetMap wiki like different uh, different like uh, projects or yeah projects or mapping projects that are related for a certain topics. So for example, accessibility, there is a project that you can find related to finding uh, buildings or finding uh, shops that uh, have like the wheelchair accessibility option. Also related to government, uh, history, uh, infrastructure, and so on. So yeah, um, what is a mapping campaign in general? Uh, it's a collaborative effort by people with common interest to map a particular territory or to improve mapping for a particular topic. This is uh, a definition that I found in the OpenStreetMap Wiki, and I found it like really uh, nice because it's really short and it's straight to the point. That is like a group of people that gather together and start collecting data, basically uh, geospatial data, and that data has some particular uh, topic. Uh, yeah. So 
uh, in general, like a mapping campaign or a mapping project involves like following characteristics. So the first one is to define the goal, the goal or the purpose of of making this. Uh, then like define the set of features and attributes to collect what 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 if we want to collect buildings or if we want to collect roads or uh, what would be the topic of the campaign. Also the region or the area of interest and the range of dates when we want to collect the data. And finally, uh, the contributors. But it would sound easy, but there could be like common issues at the beginning. Uh, for example, is their data publicly available? I mean, uh, it's possible to find data of the region that it fits for our needs, or uh, which are the tools to run a, a mapping campaign? For example, do we need like to make surveys, or do we need to download some specific tool or software? Uh, also, has the region all the features and attributes we need? Uh, is, how, is, is there going to be like coverage tracking and QA? How do we measure if the data is uh, collected perfectly fits our needs? Or is remote mapping uh, possible? Which means, like, we would do we need to deploy people to the area or not? So, based on those issues, there could be like challenges. For example, related to the data public available, uh, who is contributing? Like, is there any organization doing that, or where is the organization, or is the data uh, perfectly for our needs, or is something missing? Or Related to, uh, relate to uh, if the region has all the features and attributes, sometimes uh, data could be like sparse, sometimes could be messy. Uh, the local knowledge could be like missing because we don't know if the people that collect data knows the, the place. And also sometimes it's hard to measure the high quality of the contributions made. And related to remote mappings, uh, if we need to deploy people to the area, there could be like associated costs, for example, transportations, and sometimes uh, related to the complexity of the area, uh, it would not be possible to uh, collect all the area, all, all the information for all the area. Now, uh, based on that, uh, HUD developed a map campaign, which uh, in general terms, is a monitor to it is a tool that monitors the progress and the data quality of mapping of mapping projects or mapping campaigns. I'm going to show you right now a brief demo. So, if I go to campaigns that had uh, this is the play, uh, this is the web page that it shows. And um, first of all, I'm going to create a campaign. So, I need to log in, go to look at session, then. Uh, you can log in using uh, OSM credentials, so you don't need to create your own account. You, you just need to create your OSM one. And then I'm going to create a campaign. So the first, it involves a series of steps. The first is, uh, what is the project name? I'm going to create, for example, buildings in my city, Barranquilla. So Barranquilla Buildings will be the project name. Also, uh, the range of dates. So it, today is 19, so I'm going to start Yesterday, I'm going to end, I don't know, this Sunday. And the description is uh, collecting buildings in Barranquilla. Then I hit next. And uh, the next step is to draw the area of interest. So uh, the there are two options. The first one is to upload a file, which could be a Polygon GeoJSON or a Polygon shape file. Also, uh, the other option is to draw on the map. So let me go directly to the, my city. It's over here near the coast. Yep, and here. I'm going to map this area. I'm going to collect the data here. Yep, it's OK. And I confirm. Then I go next. And the next step is the features to select the features we want. Uh, to add a feature, there could be like three options. The first one is to use a template. So we can get a, a map campaign comes already with a whole set of templates. 
uh, for features and attributes. Also, there is a custom form so we can create a feature name. Uh, what is the feature we want to collect? The geometry of it and also all the attributes that are going to be checked. And the third one is uh, a JAML editor, which uh, sometimes when you have like, uh, you want to collect the same data for different campaigns, uh, it would be like, uh, it's not hard, it would be like tedious to start uh, writing one by one for each campaign. So a YAML editor, you can store all the features and tags you want to collect, and then you just need to copy that YAML, YAML file, or sorry, YAML, yeah, you just need to copy the text into the other campaigns. So it would be like easier and faster. So for this case, I just want to collect buildings. So I just select buildings. And finally are the settings. So the first one, uh, the option is to select the managers uh, who are the users that are going to be managers, the viewers, uh, if we want to, con to monitor some specific contributors and also if we want to add base maps. So yeah, if I press submit, I can get the status of the campaign. So it's gonna be a, a, a series of tasks and it's gonna take time sometimes. So I'm gonna use a previously one selected. So I'm going to uh, show you shops in Bogota. It's another example. And this is the dashboard. So you can get here um, the total features that were collected from shop, from shops in Bogota, the feature type monitor, which is shops and ready, the number of contributors, and the feature completeness. Then you can get here all the details for all the features, and you can get here the status of it. Uh, we, who is uh, the user that last edited the, the the feature? The date, the attributes found, and the attributes not found. So yeah, let's select the feature and I go to shops and then I see the map and it shows the area that I selected and I see all the points that are related to shops. So this is a, a list of points that shows some shops and also shows information in, in a specific color which is the completeness of the attribute. So it means that if it's red, at least two, 25 or less than 25% doesn't have these features. So this is like the, the completeness measure. Basically, it checks if all the features, sorry, if all the attributes for a given feature are within the feature collected. So in this case, we don't have it, so we can get a, a, a red one. But you can get, for example, over here, this green one, uh, you can get all the features that, for example, the name, of the shop, the opening hours, and the the the, the other types. Oh, sorry, the other attributes. So it means that it has like 100%, which is uh, okay for this of completeness. So yeah, in general, this is what Map Campaigner is. is. Basically, it collects data from OpenStreetMap. So we use overpass to collect the data, and then based on that, we measure we measure the number of attributes for each feature that are completed or not. So it's it's basically a monitor. Because, for example, if we know here that these regions do not have or some tags are missing, or if we have local knowledge, we know that there could be also other shops here. We can go directly to OSM, for example, here. And if I press edit, it goes directly to OpenStreetMap. And we can use this AO, this, uh, the AOI that we created for the campaign as a GPX in OS OpenStreetMap. And then we can go directly and we can update the data that is missing. So it's, it's, uh, this is like the real goal, like to measure or to monitor the quality of the data. And we can check before doing deployment if it's necessary or not, we can check uh, the amount of features or the amount of attributes that are, that are missing in some specific region. So yeah, this is mm, in general terms map campaigner. Also, we can get the contributor details for the features. So you can check here the ranking of the users that are contributing most for that given area. 
so we can show the rankings. We can because we are not. I, I didn't select to monitor a specific user. There are not a uh, contributors monitor. Uh, yeah. And I go back. So. So map campaigner in general fulfills two general milestones. The first one, it facilitates uh, the ground mapping by engaging contributors because we know in, in the area uh, which are the users or who is mapping and what is mapping that user. And also accelerates mapping campaigns because it includes like coverage tracking and also we can review and make quality assessment, assessment of the data collected from OSM. And all it's, it could be done all, most of all could be done like remotely. And this is the, the techie part, which is uh, in general map campaigner uh, has like a storage when we store all the campaigns, a, a server when we hit request, and also a list of, uh, of stack of functions or contributions. So when we create a campaign, we send from the server uh, the metadata of the campaign, which is the features we need, the AOI, also we need the, the, um, the range of dates, the name, description, and so on. And also, it starts computing at least a function. This is like a, a way, a kind of way of serverless ar architecture, because when we start uh, executing the compute campaign, it makes a request for, to overpass using the AOI. We read from storage the AOI, and then we execute an overpass function, which reads the data, and then we store all the data from OSM. Then, the feature completeness function is invoked by the overpass one. It starts uh, getting the data, the OSM data that we collected previously, and start uh, co computing the completeness and all the features and all the attributes and how completed each one is, and then generates a GeoJSON features, which is then stored and showed in the map. So it, it starts like a series of functions that is, are invoked one by one, and then we finally get uh, a list of functions that are executed one by one in a serverless architecture, so we don't need um, we don't need like a kind of server to make the, these functions that are running. Uh, are, they are like run every time, so we can uh, every time we need to update, we just press a button and then we start updating the data. So this could be run also in a scheduled time. So each, for example, thirty minutes or each hour or, we, or each two hours, you can like update the status of the campaign. So that's some general explanation of how, how it works. And yeah, I think that's uh, all what I wanted to show, uh, what map campaigner is. And yeah, thanks, thanks for all. Thanks a lot, Jorge, uh, for the presentation. Have you Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm here. OK, Can perfect. So, okay. yes, I hear you, Jorge. Thanks a lot for, for the presentation about uh, Map Campaigner. Uh, great to see this tool. So, we already have questions. I'm glad because during the talk, people were already excited about asking a few questions. So, I have them right here with me. So, if we're ready, we can start. So, first question, is this a new tool? And the person said, I discovered it this morning, but found out a lot of the issues. Some are already described. Uh, well, the the tool is a is a word that was developed uh, last year. It was in in December last year, and I think most of the issues that are found uh, are related to the AOI that is collected, and also I think it's related to the the option to like edit the campaign. So uh, it's a progress that was developed last year, but uh, uh, we haven't like continued working on that. But there, I, I know there are there are issues, and and we we should work on it. Okay, thank you, Jorge. So the next question is: uh, We would like uh, we will use it in a whole region or country, for example, France. Will map map campaigner don't accept large areas? So what's the plan for that, Jorge? Well, uh, basically, the the AOI restriction for large areas are because uh, overpass. We are limited to overpass because uh, we cannot collect. Uh, we cannot make a request of like big geometries to to. To overpass because it will drop error. So uh, we are uh, we can uh, we can let limit or we can construct like multiple campaigns for now. And one possible 
work is to like a, a campaign. We can split a campaign to like separate ones, separate AOIs, and then start making requests one by one. Then we collect the data and then we merge everything into one. So that's one idea we're having, and we're, we we want we uh, we can discuss it further. Okay, great to hear that, Jorge. And the next question is: uh, Do you plan to display a percentage also by attributes? Percentage also by attributes. I mean, like uh, the number of attributes collected, uh, the number of attributes collected given a, a, a feature. Or can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I will repeat it. But in case it's not clear, we can ask this person uh, to elaborate more, and we can okay. leave it for the end. Uh, so okay. I will repeat the question now. Do you plan to display a percentage also by attributes? So per attribute, there is a percentage of completeness. So this this percentage of completeness is based on the number of uh, attributes that are that are found within the feature that is collected. Uh, but uh, I don't have like really clear the question. So if, if you can elaborate yeah. a little bit more. No worry. I mean, we can ask the person to elaborate a bit more and we can come back uh, at the end of the questions. So the next question will be, uh, what is the frequency of overpass queries? So right now the scheduler is, we have we have everything in, in AWS. So the, there is a scheduler that is in Cl AWS CloudWatch and it's done per hour, per two hours. So each two hours, uh, I think it's two hours, it's, it collects data. But we're planning to like ex to like modify map campaign in order to be like user user input. So if the user wants to like update the campaign, uh, he, the user needs to like press button and then it should it, it starts like running rerunning all the tasks. Okay, thank you for the answer, uh, Jorge. So I have another one right here. Uh, is HOT using Map Campaigner currently, or did you create it mostly for other users? So, uh, in in areas for making deployment, is is currently is is currently user, uh, mostly in like the, in other areas, uh, not not that by the technical team itself, but other uh, dependencies of HOT are are using it for like making data collection. Okay, thanks for the answer, uh, and let's see. Uh, there is one comment already. Uh, they said, this is an amazing tool. Thank you for sharing. And uh, then me see, I think the person uh, just came with some more comments regarding uh, the previous question that we were not able to answer. Uh, this person is saying, uh, I want to know of many uh, example names are set for all the OSM objects in the campaign. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused too. So. Regarding the question, do you plan to display a percentage also by attributes? The person is complementing the, the question saying, I want to know of many example names are set for all the OSM objects in the campaign. Same thing for another attributes. OK, I suppose uh, he's referring to like uh, attributes that are like uh, by created by users. So. I guess that that's what he's referring. So basically, uh, Map Campaigner starts collecting the data based on the on the configuration that you set when creating the campaign. So if you don't add like the user input, uh, the user well, the the the, 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 the attribute uh, given by the user, uh, it won't collect it. So you can you can specify it within within the YAML or because in the in the templates we are not using those. Uh, user-based uh, tags. So, yeah, it depends on, on what you're like specifying within the, the YAML file. Okay, thank you, Jorge, for the answer. Uh, there is someone else writing another answer, and probably this would be the last one, uh, so we can move to the next uh, talk. So, one second. Uh, okay, it says, uh, what is the link to the project you are demonstrating? Oh, uh, so right now, projects are like, are, like private, so well, they are not private. So we, we're showing only uh, campaigns uh, that the user is self-created. But uh, I can share I can share it to him uh, the link and, and and he can he can access. He cannot edit it, but he can access. Yeah, I okay. can I can share it through the chat. I think can I share it through, through, yes, through the chat? Uh, please or in the path, uh, you can share the link so he or she can access uh, to the link and they can take advantage of the tool. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um,
Perfect. Thank you. So I think that's those are all the comments and all the questions. Thanks a lot for staying in this talk. So